live from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2017. Brought to you by Docker and support from its ecosystem partners. Okay. Welcome back. Uh, <laughs> I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host and uh, singer and you know lyricist every once in a while. Partner in crime. Uh, and happy to bring back to the program uh, Giorgio Renyi, who is the CTO of Scality. So good to see you again. Hey, hi Jim, hi uh, Stu, very nice to see you again. Yeah, so you. Giorgio, I interviewed you at Amazon reInvent, yes. so talked about where you fit in the cloud environment. So here at DockerCon, hey, bring us up to space, you're a software-defined storage company, where do containers and Docker fit into the offering that you have? Absolutely, so we software-defined storage for the enterprise. One of our goal is to simplify storage operation, because it's hard to actually build a petabyte scale system. How can we make it easier for our customers to use, right? And one of the things that containers give us is the ability to easily package our software and deploy it anywhere, right? For example, we have options. What do you want your interface to be for storage? Should it be on the client side? Should it be on the server side? Should it be somewhere else? With container, it's very easy to automate and, uh, and one container can do a lot of things, right? So it's pretty easy. Yeah, and talk about how scalability fits into your environment. And my understanding, you, you, work, you work with Docker Swarm, do you also work with Kubernetes? Yeah. Where does that fit yeah, into? Yeah, so I will talk about an uh, announcement we made today. Uh, just before I do that, just a quick, uh, so the container, we follow the uh, immutable container design. So when you have a container, uh, you, you can kill it at any point in time, right? And another container will take over. So there's nothing in our architecture that's a single point of failure. So with Docker, it's very easy to do which we did before, but Docker simplifies all this operation aspect for us. All right, and uh, so the announcement, is, do you also do Kubernetes then, or is it just uh, the Docker Swarm right now, or? Yeah, so there's a container automation war. We haven't picked a side yet. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Uh, t talk to us about your customers. How much of it is it a pull for them asking you about containers? How much is it just something you are building into your architecture because it makes sense going forward? Yeah, so we work with very large enterprises. Uh, they don't know what the other department is doing. So sometimes you talk to the storage team and they tell, tell you, we'll never deploy containers. But then if you talk inside that company, you will see that another group has deployed container for the last two years in production. And they actually have a support contract with Docker, they have an enterprise deployment. And so you have to find out is there Docker experience, and 99% of the time there is Docker experience. Yeah, it reminds me of Linux a lot. You know, yes. 15, to exactly. 10 or 15 years ago, yeah. uh, you talk to a big group, are you doing Linux, and the guy, no, and they're like, wait, Bob's <laughs> been doing Linux a yeah, bunch, and, and we're years. doing it everything. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think we Same should, thing, yeah. Um, and th this has been such a huge explosion of what's been happening. Uh, you know, I, I've talked to some of the vendors here that have been working with containers for you know, eight, 10 years yeah. almost, but with Docker, it's really helped uh, you know, just you know, bring it to the masses. So um, yeah, can, can you maybe speak to you know, how it's changed in your environment as CTO, how it you know, influences yeah. your vision of the future? Yeah, so as a, as a CTO, it allows us to go from the development platform to the laptop of our developers to the uh, simple one server deployment for open source versions that can start on any VM or any one machine, down to the distributed system with a uh, thousand of servers, a uh, hundred of petabytes, and it's all the same container. Mm -hmm. So this flexibility is huge. And for continuous delivery, continuous integration platforms that we have, uh, being able to use the exact same code from the laptop workstation to the actual deployment uh, improves quality a lot. All right, uh, Giorgio, uh, the keynotes today uh, talked about a lot, a lot of open source things yeah. there. There's the Mobi project, uh, there's Linux Kit. Uh, you know, are you guys involved in any of the open source? How are your customers uh, you know, embracing open yeah. source these days? So Docker is releasing a lot of software. We cannot take everything and bring it to enterprise. You know, it's not, we're a software company that sells products, so we don't actually host our own platform. It's our customers, so we need to go a little bit slower. So Docker is faster than us in releasing new features. Uh, but that means that a feature that, re that was released last year, like Swarm, now is uh, ready to be used in production for our customers. And so that brings me back to the announcement from today. So the last time we talked in Las Vegas, uh, our open source was new and we had 50,000 downloads. Now we have 250,000 downloads. So in less than six months, I think it's four months and a half, we added 200,000 downloads. And one of the reasons for that is it's so easy to use it with Docker. Uh, and then people in the community were telling us that 
they need to be deployed in a, in a fault tolerant fashion. So being able to lose the machine and continue having the storage working, which makes sense, but not at the scale of a wing, not at the scale of our multi-pelabyte system. So something in the middle. And so we try to look at developing our own automation, our own fault tolerance. And we say, what, what a minute, Docker is doing that. They, they built Docker Swarm that does exactly what we want it to do. So can we use that? So our release from today is uh, you can actually deploy our storage system using Docker Swarm. So a few command line, and it will automatically be fault tolerant. If you lose a machine, it will start from another machine. And it all works load balance automatically and with security as well because communication can be encrypted. So it's all of these benefits by just using Swarm, we don't have to code anything. Right. Uh, so we will follow up on that. Uh, uh, Giorgio, uh, Solomon talked about uh, this morning, Docker you know, will be where you want it to be. It's you know, on-premises, in the public cloud yeah. around. Can you talk a little bit of you know, your, your software, uh, the breadth of support you have. Uh, you know, we talked to you at AWS, think you guys support Azure. You know, what's driving you to certain environments? Yeah. What are your customers doing and what is that breadth that you guys offer? Yeah, so a lot of things that Solomon said resonate with our customers. So one thing is that you don't want to be stuck with one, one platform. You want the liberty to be able to pick and choose and change. And so storage is very sticky. So if you have a petabyte somewhere, it's going to be hard to move. But what you can be sure is the next year is going to be two petabytes. So when the extension comes in, you want to be able to select your hardware vendor for private, but also for public. What about if we, you could decide the next four petabytes go on Google Cloud Compute, and the next five petabytes go on Azure, so that you're not stuck with any of them. Mm -hmm. And so what we are releasing, uh, the press release talks about that, is the ability to deploy your S3 service, so our object store service, and target with the same instance multiple storage backend. And they can be local, so local volumes, drives on your machine, very simple stuff. Even an NFS, ZFS mount point works as well. It can be public using AWS, and we're adding Azure and Google Cloud Compute. So the same S3 code base can actually give you different location, and the location can be hybrid, local, private, public, you name it. Mm. Yeah. Right. Uh, another key focus that Docker talked about, especially in the open source community, is security. Yeah. Uh, can you speak to how security fits into your environment? Uh, you know, yeah. anything in your announcement that enhances the security pieces? Yeah. So there's a lot of um, key management to be done. So access keys, authentication key, SSL keys, and uh, each vendor is trying to build their own. Right. They're trying to think about their own ways to actually store this sensitive information. Uh, with Docker, we haven't done it yet, but what Solomon said resonate is a. Uh, what about if you use Docker as your uh, security authentication provider, so that it's one shop for everything else. So, yeah. uh, and this is something I'm going to look at. We haven't implemented it yet, but I'm going to look at it. The other thing that I was said, I think that was in it with that, is portability. Uh, so we developed our own authentication engine called Vault, which actually implements the uh, Amazon IAM interface, so an entity and access management, so it's pretty standard. But if you use Vault, the same authentication token for local, we work on AWS, we also work on Azure, and also work on Google Cloud. So as an IT admin, I can just use my Active Directory connect, connected to, my, to the Scality Vault, and if, uh, if a user leaves the company, I can just delete it from Active Directory, and it will disappear from all the clouds mm -hmm. in one big, portable, transparent way. So yeah, this is kind of the things we look at as well. With multi-level access controls yes. and role-based. So groups, role-based, delegation policies, and so forth. Dedication is in there as well. Okay. So it's a big bet. Uh, last year we decided to implement IAM, which nobody else has done, and it pays off a lot because a lot of our customers are bank, banks, uh, insurance companies, and they need that level of security. Mm -hmm. So it's a big advantage. Right. Yeah. Uh, Giorgio, one of the big things that's been talked about for about the last six months or so is you know, how uh, things like IoT are really going to drive edge computing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think back to like the early days of object storage and I'm curious how, how that whole you know, development fits into what you're doing and, and how you think about storage. Yeah. So we're looking at IoT very closely. Um, there's a lot of volumes, but the volumes arrive after the data has been crunched. There's some kind of consolidation, right? And yeah. the object store is perfect for that layer. So let's say the daily stats are at the edge with very precise granularity. Then they get compressed into some kind of time series data, and this fits very well in the object store. Uh, for the edge storage itself, I don't think there's a solution no. today. And there's no standard as well. So I'm looking at this and seeing what's going to happen. But I think object store are great for storing all the archive, but not good for the real-time IoT data but I'm still looking to what standards are going to emerge, right? Yeah, federated object storage for the fog, you know, yeah. of the IoT. Yeah. 
And it's both a database type workload and object storage, so it's fascinating, but there's no answer yet. Yeah. I don't think so, unless you guys tell me you've seen it. <laughs> I'm not aware of it. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Giorgio, uh, so you've got the announcement. What other things uh, can you tell Skeldy? What, what's, what's going on this week? Have you had any customer conversations uh, this week yet that have stood yeah, out? Yeah, so for you? we have uh, two partners at DockerCon, uh, so it's great to be able to meet them here. Uh, I'm also looking at automation. Uh, so Docker Swarm is one, Swarm Kit, but there's also Kubernetes and Mesosphere, they're all here this week, so I'm going to talk to them. And uh, HPE, which is one of our partners, is here too, so we're going to talk about this as well. And I need to find some time to understand the security model we talked about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Giorgio, really appreciate all the updates yeah. here. I want to give you the f final word uh, on, on what, what's exciting you. Uh, you know, you talked about some of the partner things, but uh, anything else you'd want people to take away from this show? <laughs> yeah, so I think the um, hybrid model for storage makes a lot of sense because you don't want to be stuck to a provider. And I was just going to say that uh, in a few months, so in June, we're going to make a big announcement. Uh, and that will show that with Scality, you can leverage any cloud and automatically like manage your data of our multiple providers. And we're going to give a hint of that next week at uh, NAB, where I'll be presenting uh, with a large customer of some of the prototypes that we've been working on. All right, well, Giorgio Renier, really appreciate you to talk to you again. We'll be back uh, wrapping up day one of DockerCon 2017. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching theCUBE.